Alrighty, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Malt Round of 16 Weekend. We have another very exciting match for you guys here today as we continue right along with this next block of matches. It is going to be Maxis taking on Shabest. And right now, my name is Sparky and I am joined in the commentary booth by none other than SurfChu85. Surf, how you doing? Hello, hello. It's been a pretty long weekend for me. And thank you. thankfully, I'm still holding up very well. That's good. That's very good. And right now, um, we will get you into what is probably going to be the warm-ups and then the, the rolls, bands, and picks. But we are currently waiting on best to get into the lobby and they are here now so we can get this match underway and as a reminder to everybody watching along if you haven't been keeping track of the action so far this weekend this is a best of nine and this is also a loser's bracket match. There is going to be somebody eliminated from the tournament in this match. So be on the lookout for that. First player, 2-5 points, will be punching their ticket into the loser's quarterfinals. And the other, who doesn't worry about the tournament anymore? Well, you, I mean, I guess saying it, saying it that way kind of be, makes it sound positive, but obviously one of these players will, will want to go further into oh, this tournament. Sure. Also, inter interesting warm-up choice here, and I think I know who picked this, based on what I've heard. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure Maxis is the one who picked this, because I know that Maxis really likes this chart. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a good way to get the fingers going at the start of the day, or at midday, or at the end of the day, depending on your time zone. Gotta love having these tournaments where literally anybody at any time can be playing this game yeah um i i'm not i'm not sure if you're if you were leading towards like a clock joke due to the title of this song like you know, there's a lot of time <laughs> you know if, if i were more awake right now i i would have that was completely unintentional yeah well, anyways um uh, this chart was actually the qualifier, the LN release coordination qualifier for uh, PH Nationals 7K this year. And this would be around what? Uh, finals this year? Uh, for, for this tournament? Oh, okay. So a sign of things to come for those watching along that have a pretty keen interest in making it far in this tournament, what to expect in terms of LN coordination difficulty. So maybe just wanting to get acquainted. I mean, like you said, they do enjoy this chart uh, quite a bit, so. Yeah, like, I, I honestly like the variety of the patterns that are actually in here. It, it doesn't feel like an LN chart at all. Yeah, for sure. It it definitely throws enough variety at you, and that might be another reason why uh, Maxis likes this chart so much is the fact that they get to practice a different variety of pattern structures and different techniques to try and make their way through relatively unscathed. But for right now, I think uh, with it being the warm up, you don't really want to overexert yourself too much. But the accuracy difference between the two of them, at least on this, is Actually starting to even out a little bit as we continue on. It feels like once the density picks up, both players kind of get... Uh, take it for a little bit of a ride before things calm down again. Alright, um, just to recap uh, the hit match history between these two players. Uh, Maxus went into the lower bracket, into the, this side of the bracket, the loses bracket, uh, after getting swept by Charlie's Mad Gut. And I, I don't... Yeah, that was like one heck of a mismatch uh, between two between two players. I mean, everybody knows how good Charlie's Mad Cut is. And uh, Shabes, on the other hand, lost to Unitory 4-2 uh, last weekend. Definitely something to, to look at between these two players. 
Like Maxis has something to prove, I would think. Yeah, for sure. I think both players actually have something to prove. If losing a 4-2, that could have easily been a tiebreaker situation. And who knows, maybe the story could have turned out a little bit differently for Shabest as well. So we'll see which of these two uh, pulls it out of the bag. Different map pool. Bigger uh, point total you need to get. So a little bit more room to play with in terms of uh, getting these picks through. And it looks like we're going to get into the second warm-up. This is a particularly old chart now that I look at the uh, mapper name. Uh, this guy might be more known nowadays as Maple Syrup. Oh, okay. Um, like having this username, I think I kind of have an idea what this chart is going to be. This one did be, this one be your usual Maple Syrup chart because this is going to be a bit more varied, like a bit more abrasive, like something you'd see like around 2016, 2017. Yeah, so a little bit of a throwback. You gotta enjoy the classics. I think you've said that yourself. Enjoying some of these older charts. Trying to slip them in whenever you can. Yeah, like, there's a like there's a certain charm to playing like the older stuff. Uh, not yeah, to mention, for sure. Like, not to mention that they do introduce some some patterning that um, a lot of the charters nowadays, probably, at least uh, when we're talking about Osimania, like wouldn't dare to touch. Like, like these LNs with a mini one half bracket stream. Like this is pretty rough. Yeah, but all the rage back in the day. It feels like the I I, th I think this is applicable to both main key modes where the the mapping meta has kind of evolved a little bit in terms of what's deemed acceptable in terms of. Uh, trying to maintain some semblance of comfort in the pattern structure. Whereas back then, it was kind of like, hey, it exists. <laughs> Play it. Yeah. But I, I think that this, there is always a benefit to play like a lot of the more uncomfortable stuff. Like, because like if you're able to hit uncomfortable stuff, how much more for the more... For the more, let's just say, stuff that we'd expect in the current meta game. Yeah, for sure. It, it's one of those like, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball type of situations. Also, um, as... another another thing like starting out on Sabuki as well is that um, never underestimate the value of random. Ah, uh, for sure. If you want to add some add some spice to your to your chart and give yourself a bit of a challenge, something to consider. Also, would help with hitting the, all of those awkward patterns because like you're just going to be forced to play everything. For sure, Anyways. but that will do it. Yep, that will do it for the warm ups. Here we're gonna get into the rolls, the bands, and then that all important first pick here. Another, what are your predictions for the roles here? I'm kind of hoping for like a 100 somewhere, somehow. Because I think that's like the only role. We haven't had a 100 role the entire tournament yet. Oh. Which is so weird to say. I, I, know, I know how unlikely it is, but it just has to happen some, some point. Yeah, law of averages dictates. Uh, we're due for a hundred in before this tournament's over. I imagine somebody's gonna get a hundred. I always like to predict a hundred and one. That it's somebody's gonna get the max, somebody's gonna get the minimum, <laughs> right after another. Oh uh, yeah, that that would be. Oh, that would be funny and unfortunate at the same time, especially for the person oh, for who sure. rolled the one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which. Uh, variation would be funnier if the person who rolls first gets the hundred, or if the person who rolls first gets the one. I think it's if it's the hundred. Yeah, the hundred. I'd say the hundred getting being the second roll actually, because like, oh wait, yeah. Um, actually, no, that's fair. Because okay, if you roll the one way. first, 
if, if you roll the one first, it, it's just like that extra salt in the wound of like you could have yeah. rolled anything to beat me in this roll, and you and you just max it out. And right now we are waiting on Maxis to do their roll. Ah, I think they were. All you know right. how as long as the chat takes you to the wrong, uh, to the wrong room. Ninety nine. Oh, they died. Almost. <laughs> Almost. This man was practicing the rolls in a different, in a different room. He was in spectator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that that is funny. That is peak comedy, and it looks like LM2 going to be removed from the pool. Like at least, uh, from what I from what I noticed, the discourse with these two players, uh, Maxis is, I would think, is more of on a disadvantage in this matchup. So, Maxis just needs to tread carefully with her strategy here. Uh, it does appear that. The best is the one banning the LN Max's band boxel adventure. I, I can see LN1. Yeah. So Maxis will be the one uh, taking advantage of the long notes I would if if I would imagine. I, I think this might be one of those LN versus Rice matchups again. Which we haven't had too many um this round. Like the, like the only notable ones that I can remember is like what uh, two like two matches ago like the pre previous one was pretty wild since both players were just getting like what break points off each other oh you love to see it but with that being said we are loaded into LN1 here we are going to start this best of nine first player two five points we'll be finding themselves in that losers bracket quarterfinals Loser will be going home from Malt. Good luck to both players. The best immediately showing some signs of accuracy problems and actually finding a miss on those holds. Yeah, it seems like the this lower level coordination kind of... There's a point of discomfort for a lot of players, and we're seeing it begin to develop here on the side of Shabess. Max is really taking advantage for the moment as we cross into the second quarter of the chart now, growing their lead to about 24,000 points and change for the moment, despite both of them taking a little bit of damage to their accuracy. Max is still able to keep it above that 99% mark for the moment here. Well, that's, like this is a pretty comfortable lead uh, for Maxis here. Like the only the only thing Maxis really needs to be careful is like just be able to, to like hit like get those uh pretty tricky releases just fine and they should be good to go. As it stands, they are still maintaining a full combo. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Shabes will be just tanking this, uh, tanking this chart in particular. Yeah, just trying to make it through, maybe take the opportunity to think about what their first map pick is going to be uh, considering we're already in the last quarter it's about a full percent in terms of accuracy to between the two players and max is really just cruising right along to the tune of about 55,000 points and climbing as we continue on here a very very good run for them to start this off and knowing that they're going to be finding a lot of success in this ln pool maybe they can start to chance uh, the hybrids once they do exhaust that second pick here. Just uh oh, unfortunately for Maxis though, dropping that, dropping the full combo. But it's a relatively clean, relatively clean draw. Oh my gosh, why, why? I've been yeah, having I mean, a few it, moments like that over this weekend, huh? I it happens. Like the, you're hyper concentrating for the better part of two minutes. And eventually something's gonna give. And if it's not the spacebar LN, it's usually one of the outer column LNs that is the one that's forgotten about. Yeah. <laughs> and just gets released yeah. way too early. That is true. But solid, solid first point here for Maxis. Like just uh, missing out on the full combo in the end. But that's fine. Like they got the one point in. 
try to gain that confidence for the mo- for the most part. Now Shabes is the one picking baby, a chart that we haven't really seen that much this weekend. Yeah, I think I've only seen it uh maybe once or twice so far this weekend. Not the most popular pick in this rice pool, but definitely one that some of the more physical players might want to opt to jump into. Court stream is definitely something that can be pretty uncomfortable, especially if you're not uh, too inclined to reading some of these four or five note chords. The, the funny thing is that um, we've been receiving like some feedback that um, if maybe this chart was like around five BPM faster, this would have been an easier pick. You know, it's funny that players say stuff like that. That it's like, it, it, if it's faster, it's easier because they can. They don't have to think about the patterns as hard. They can kind of just intuitively roll their fingers fast enough to uh, anticipate what's going to happen next. And with it being just under uh, or just at 110 BPM, it, it's one of those that it's. It makes you think about where your fingers are going to go at that point as we see some early exchanges here between the two players. Max is faring a little bit worse for wear in those trades and is going to give Shabes now the lead to work with and basically take and run. 99% for them, 97 for Max is at the moment. So far so good for both of these players, but Shabes is performing the best, is having the better performance between the two, uh, just under 99% as they do, as both players do continually get a few misses like those there were a few trades there max is getting the messier of the getting the messier first half of the chart uh between between these two yeah but able to shrink the lead momentarily to about four digits if they can keep this last third relatively clean and shabest isn't too careful this could actually still swing in max's favor if they are able to but they find an immediate trade going back into the cord stream so a quarter of the map left to go. Max is climbing back up to that 98% mark. Still about 8 tenths behind, but going to be helping Shabes increase this lead now as these four note chords really start to chip away at their accuracy. Shabes does eventually trade it back, but the damage might already be done here as we go into the last eight. Shabes is performing like just enough to keep them afloat here. It, this is a pretty sizable score gap here, especially with Max's finding more misses as Shabes uh, just manages to trade one of those, but in the end, it does it won't really matter. For sure, and Shabes able to equalize here, make it one to one now between these two players. Maxis, I wouldn't be surprised if LN3 came out here. And sure enough, yeah, there we go. LN3 is kind of interesting since this is kind of different. Uh, than the other two LN picks we have here. Uh, if you if you just squint your eyes a little bit, this is just an, a stream chart through and through. Yeah, for sure. Very comfortable single note LN patterns. Um, I think a couple players yesterday were basically saying it's like this is there's a rice chart in disguise as an LN chart. Very interesting seeing the oh there goes Maxis. That's probably gonna be an yeah, abort. Think, yeah, this will be an abort. You know, in the past I would wonder what causes players to uh leave the lobby sometimes before the map starts. Uh I realized that players' hand positions are dangerously close to the escape key sometimes. And it's usually the ring fingers that are the culprit when it comes to uh, accidentally hitting it. Like if you have your keybinds on the QW side of your keyboard, it is just prime spot, prime real estate for hitting that escape key. That is true. Not not to mention that um, there are some people that have um, what you call this like this muscle memory. Like if they if they for some reason miss like early in the chart like they just reach for the restart button or escape to pause it oh yeah it's something it's something for you don't sure. really want to do in the multiplayer 
the good thing is that it is inside the 30 seconds that we allow for the players as a buffer uh, to get that abort. So no harm, no foul, no map had been played at that point. So uh, we call it a mulligan and we just start again. Also, shout out, shout outs to um, the G like the the person who did the animations for the GFX here, you know, man, like using a sixty percent keyboard. I, I I always end up messing up there, like <laughs> whenever I borrow <laughs> his keyboard, keep on hitting the escape button because of how small it is. That's fair. Yeah, whenever they're tightly they're tightly compacted, it's it like I said, it's just prime real estate to do that little bit of an oopsie but we're gonna get into this chart now proper and it looks like max is a little bit more comfortable out of those opening patterns before we get into these ln streams not the worst in the world to deal with but after a while if you're not too careful you take those releases for granted you can start chipping away your accuracy as both players hover around that low 99 percent mark but your best gonna find the first drop on those anchors here and we continue on with max is holding on to about a 5,000 point lead I I'd say like the first uh first third of this chart is like kinda still kinda basic, but once we enter like uh this section here where the pattern where the things start to alternate um uh, Maxis and Shabes tra trading a few misses with Maxis having a disadvantage accuracy wise, uh like both of these players have to be super careful, especially in this pattern where this is deceivingly tricky to hit. Yeah, for sure, and it catches both players out ever so slightly as they continue on transitioning out of it, not able to keep that entire section clean. And it is Shabes actually taking the advantage here now as they find a drop going back into those anchors, not really able to handle them too comfortably. As we continue on, they are going to be trading once again as we make our way into the last quarter of the chart. Still about a 4% in their favor to work with for the moment and Max is going to need to pick it up here in this last quarter to prevent the first breakpoint from going over that's going to help Shabes finding the drop not answered back this time from Maxis. like there's a percent accuracy difference here so Shabes needs um like Maxis needs for Shabes to have a massive meltdown at the ending here but I don't see that happening as we are about to end this chart and Shabes will be grabbing their first breakpoint in this match yeah, very well played. That was going back and forth for long stretches of that chart. And Shabes able to take one of these LN breakpoints away from Maxis and really uh, maybe just pinch their map pool a little bit. Max is going to need to rely on the hybrids from here on out. Shabes now needing just one less rice chart to see if they can secure this match. Shabes can comfortably go for any pick uh, in the rice, any rice pick here. I would, I would say maybe the slifer or Awekaki might be the more the more obvious picks here. And there you go, uh, Shabes will be picking the slifer. Yeah, unsurprising. It's it's really just more what style of rice chart do you want to go for at this time. Inter interestingly, we've gone this far into a match without seeing the core jack pick just yet. I I, I mentioned this uh, earlier, like in an earlier match. Like, there's only two reasons for players to pick the core jack pick. It's either they're good at it or they just want to see the background. Nothing in between. <laughs> that is the most interesting take I have ever heard about core jack picks in a hot minute and I am inclined to agree with you on that one as we begin rice four here rice the core jack pick will need to be left by the wayside for the moment and Shabes actually finding a very early drop before that 400 combo cap so not the most devastating miss in the world if you do this on Max's here uh, transitioning into this mini core stream section we're not even at the hardest part of the chart yet yeah, it's been interesting watching Maxis play at certain times. You just see streaks of 200s start to come out as they try to, I guess, keep themselves ahead of what's going on on screen because the worst thing you can do is fall behind, start dragging some of these patterns, and those 200s can quickly become 50s from hitting way too late. And in doing so, taking massive damage to their accuracy, and despite still holding on to their full combo, Shabes now able to take the lead to the tune of about 15,000 points. The best phenomenon, like holding, 
not holding like hitting these uh galloping chords just fine like actually gaining accuracy in the process this is something that i haven't seen from a lot of players in this tournament uh maxis still maintaining the full combo of theirs but taking a massive hit in the accuracy in doing so yeah for sure down to 97 percent range not uncatchable by any stretch of the imagination a couple of rough sections from Shabes might be able to shrink this lead ever so slightly because of that fact but because of the fact that Shabes found their drop so early on the room for capitalization is that much lower as we begin this last quarter and it's about 30,000 points now as Shabes beginning to climb once again 99.3 for them and Maxis does lose that full combo once we get into this core stream section yeah the increase in density might have caught up caught on Max's here. Uh, they, like, Max's does appear that they are capable of hitting this just fine. It's just that, like, being able to get that accuracy down, it has been making the difference between these two players and these rice picks. Yeah, for sure. And Shabazz going to be able to successfully capitalize on that breakpoint that they acquired from LN3 and make it 1-3 to three now. And Maxis, no more LNs to work with. Now it's just a matter of which of the hybrids they're going to opt to go into now. They're going for Hybrid 2, which is, I would say, the most similar to LN1 and LN2 in this pool. Uh, not, not really surprised with that. Yeah, for sure. Trying to stay within the relative comfort zone, see if they can push the best off. But with the hybrids, there's always that risk if there's just enough pattern variety and if you throw too much rice into that, it does give the more rice-oriented player an opportunity to close the gap, keep it really close. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that develops as we get into the, fourth, the fifth map, actually, of this best of nine. Maxis has to be has to be careful as well with the more fit the more physical aspect of this chart uh, it's this isn't exactly like the ln1 and ln2 where they're just slow they're just consistent this one you're going to be bombarded with like a few a few more um abrasive patterns as we see both of these players finding early drops here uh maxis with the better of the accuracy better of the Actually, yeah, better of the two accuracies now, practically a percent. Like, this accuracy is not the territory we w we have seen in practically all the matches. Like, accuracy is dropping below 97% for both of these players. Yeah, definitely a bit of a bit of a struggle for both of them as they try and get settled in here and. Between those two exchanges, Max is nursing that tiny bit of a lead early on, but now it's starting to be a little bit of a tug of war as we get into the last half. It is going to be all to play for here as both of them finding their finding their bearings a little bit. Shabes finding the next drop, not able to get over that 400 combo cap very confidently, and Max is now able to build up some semblance of combo, going to be able to take a bit of the lead, but not able to capitalize on it fully as they find a couple of drops to hand the lead back. Yep. Maxis might need a miss from Shabes, and there you go. Maxis grab snatching the lead, but is going to be trading that miss. What are oh, the players actually finding a few trades? Hey, this is super close. This is super they close. Are, they are just swinging wildly back and forth, and whoever... It's going to come down to who misses last. I feel like whoever misses last is going to be the one losing this chart. And right now, Max is able to hold on to some semblance of combo. Shabes really having a rough go, transitioning out of that last section. And it is now 10,000 points in the red side's favor and this map is quickly coming to an end and despite everything that happened there maxis hangs on to make it two to three now maxis doing well enough to to get their second point in this match and at least closing closing some of the pool for for best as all right, there we go. Uh, we're going to be seeing Rice 3 this time around, the core jackpick. And I, I think I'm expecting a few funny scores uh, for both of these players. Yeah, for sure. There, there was, I think, a match last night where it was basically V1 double S's for both players. It just came down to 
who had the lower miss count. <laughs> Everything else was at zero. We we had we had one as well earlier today when like legit we had someone have like ninety eight gold three hundreds with like, like what twenty misses. Oh dear lord, that is quintessential core jack play if I have ever heard it. It's gonna be interesting to see who can keep that 300 count as low as possible. Who can keep that miss column clean? It, it seems that every now and again you, you have those, those funny scores that come out. Maxis with a slight accuracy lead, but. I don't think we should I, use I'm gonna shut up. anymore. I'm gonna <laughs> well, shut I think, up. I think, I think we're both done. <laughs> At this point, it is the first miss going the way of Maxis Shabes, able to take that now and roll to about a 5,000 point lead. But the actions are still very tight. It does take about two to three tenths of a percent to overcome singular drops, especially if they're clean enough. And right now, the accuracy is starting to swivel back and forth between the two players, hovering within that 99.2% mark, give or take a couple of 200s coming out here and there, keeping track of these cords. And Shabes finds the drop on the transition. Actually, two consecutive drops as well. Uh, Max is having a low, relatively lower accuracy right now. Is still keep uh, giving Shabes like a semblance of a lead here, and Max is actually finding a major act drop even despite having like this one at four jacks here. Pretty much the reason why Shabes is still in the lead. Yeah, they are. They're so far to the left hand side of their UR bar that it's basically every massive cord that comes out is just basically 20 to 25 300s all at once and it is just doing a number on Maxis's accuracy at the moment it is basically six tenths of a percent in favor of Shabes despite Shabes losing the battle of the misses for the moment there's still a quarter of the chart left to go there's still plenty that can still happen but gonna need to hunker down and there he goes Shabes finds yep. another drop here but Maxis trades it back and it's a pretty massive drop as well like you, you see that accuracy bar lean more towards the left here, and yet another drop here from Max. Is actually, both of these players trading, but Shabes having the cleaner of the two plays here. Um, that does mean that Shabes is still going to be stretching this lead despite a few misses. Oh, it feels like they're synchronized at the moment. Every time one drops, the other is like, no, I got you, fam. And then they find the drop right after. It is unfortunate sometimes, but Shabes able to ride it out at the end of the day and make it 2-4 to four now. No 200s coming from Shabes, totally. <laughs> that is... Yeah, this is... This that, is funny. Take a, take, take a picture of that and just say this is a core jack score. And everybody's just going to be like, ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Max is going to ride it out on hybrid one here, see if they can continue this match. They're going to need to take a breakpoint back before too long, lest they run out of time here. Shabes, at worst, has secured themselves a tiebreaker in this match. Max is going for Marionette, and I do think that this is actually a good pick from them. Uh, but again, Max has to be careful with the misses. Uh, and because uh, Hybrid 2 was a bit too risky, a bit too close for, if I say for Max's liking. But other than that, like, other than winning this one, they do need a, a very vital breakpoint as well after this one. So Maxis just needs to perform, like, pull something special out of the bag. Yeah, not strong starts for either player. A lot of 50s coming out in that early introduction. Going to put a little damper to their starting accuracy. Going to start to even out as we continue on here. But when all is said and done, it is about... A couple thousand points in favor of Shabes for the moment, but Shabes actually finds the drop, trading back and forth three times basically as we get through this introduction. Neither player wanting to get over that 400 combo cap to really start to pull away here, and now it's again a battle of the accuracies between the two players. Uh, Maxis is in the disadvantage position in terms of the accuracy, but combo wise, uh, Maxis is actually in a slight lead. Um, but Maxis really needs to step up on that accuracy because that part isn't really helping them. And that stare, oh, that, that stare was super messy for them. Yeah, but very importantly, able to hold on to combo. I feel like if they find another break here, that could spell the end for 
their tournament run as we continue on. Back half of the shards still left to come, both of them handling Sony's transitions very beautifully as we continue on here. Still about a 4%, almost 2 in favor of Shabest, but Shabest is actually the first one to find the drop as we make our way into the last third. Gonna put a tiny bit of a dent in their lead, but it is a substantial one that Maxis has to claw through, but that's a start here. There's still a third of a chart remaining, so there's still some room, but it's starting to close. The door is starting to close here for Maxis, especially with Shabes looking to uh looking to just maintain their composure with the last few last 15-ish seconds of this chart. Yeah, an eighth of the chart still left to go. It is 26,000 points in favor of Shabes. The window of opportunity is quickly closing. The Sun is setting on Maxis' turn tournament run. There are a couple of drops coming out here from Shabes to close it out, but they have built enough of a buffer. It's 70,000. It is closing. Is there enough time? I don't think there is. The last LN comes out, and Shabes will be able to close it out by a score of 2 to 5. A very good run here from Maxis, but unfortunately, it is cut short in this match. Congratulations to Shabes for advancing to the losers bracket, the quarterfinals, where they are assured of at least one more match. For sure. Commiserations to Maxis. I hope they had a ton of fun during their time in Malt. Some really nice performances put together, but unfortunately not able to uh, see it through to the end. And we'll be saying goodbye to them. But congratulations to Shabest once again, punching their ticket into the losers' quarterfinals, where they'll hope to try and continue this run that they're on. And that will do it for us for right now. Our next block of matches is going to be basically a five-hour gauntlet to go through. I'm going to start it off at 16 UTC. It's going to be Kazon going up against Shikitashi. Then Musty taking on Survey. Accelerix taking on Lazarant. Jungle taking on Pulet for Teeth. And then we close out the weekend with Delta 386 taking on Ziquid. So take a little bit of a break. Maybe finish having a meal for the day. And then tune back in at 16 UTC. We'll catch you guys later.